is, is right. The elements are all right. The tornado could possibly... High tornado drill is scheduled for Wednesday, weather permitting. And tonight, Rich Thomas begins a series of reports to remind all of us that severe weather is serious business, especially when it comes to tornadoes. Alabama ranks fourth in the nation in the number of killer tornadoes and fifth in the number of fatalities. November 15, 1989, Huntsville. A tornado strikes during afternoon rush hour. 21 people die. May 3, 1984, Montgomery. An early morning tornado kills five and injures 35 others. Most of the deaths and injuries occur in vehicles as commuters head to work. April 3, 1974, a family of violent tornadoes sweep across North Alabama in the late night hours, 77 dead. In fact, since 1950, more than 300 Alabamians have lost their lives, more than 3,500 injuries, damage estimated at over a billion dollars. But why is Alabama's death rate so proportionately high? David Wilfing is the meteorologist in charge of the National Weather Service office in Montgomery. Our problem here, most of our tornadoes are a lot smaller than the type you get in the Midwest. They only stay on the ground maybe for a few minutes up to maybe 15 minutes at a time. They tend to skip around. They're harder to detect on the radar because they're so small. Plus the fact they're usually embedded in rain. Many of them occur at nighttime. And it's just harder to get the warnings out to the people in the middle of the night. So there's, there's several reasons for that. Now improvements in technology offer the promise of earlier tornado detection and more accurate warnings. The National Weather Service is installing a new generation of Doppler weather radars to replace the old network of radars developed in the 1950s. The first of these new radars in Alabama, located in extreme northern Macon County, is expected to be operational later this month. I believe the accuracy and timeliness of our warnings are going to improve a great deal. We'll be able to get tornado warnings out that much sooner because we'll see the wind patterns inside the storm. But no warning is good enough unless it reaches the public quickly. Now improved satellite communications and Channel 12's first warning can get the warning to our viewers almost instantly. At Channel 12, you're, you're able to get our warnings out on television faster than we can even get them on NOAA Weather Radio. And we're just real proud that you're able to do that. But as soon as we compose the warning and enter it in our computers, it's on the television screen, and that, that's tremendous. Now this week during Severe Weather Preparedness Week is a good time to sit down and review your severe weather safety plan, whether it be for your office, for your school, or for your home. And if you're not sure what action to take during severe weather, you can contact your local or county emergency management agency. They're located in the blue pages of the phone book, or call the state emergency management office at area code 205-280-2200. From the Weather Center, Rich Thomas, WSFA News 12, Montgomery. By the way, if you didn't have a chance to write that number down, we will have it on our switchboard uh, tomorrow. You can call and get it. Uh, and tomorrow night, in part two of our series, Mark Prater talks about severe thunderstorms and lightning. Lightning is the biggest killer. Still to come...